Raccoons are a huge problem in Japan. Since the late 70s, they've been on an all Japan tour, leaving a trail of death, destruction, and teeth sucking in their wake. Their most heinous crimes include the mass destruction of a number of indigenous species, especially birds, as bird eggs make wonderful little raccoon snacks. They've damaged an estimated 80% of temples as their wood designs and big open spaces make wonderful little raccoon homes. They cause huge agricultural damage. In Hokkaido alone, they cause 30 billion yen worth of agricultural damage every single year. They attack hundreds of nosy, garbage inspecting obasans and ojisans annually. And their most heinous crime of all, the cultural appropriation of tanukis, Japan's OG raccoon dog. And that is unforgivable. Since the late 70s, raccoons have grown so widespread in Japan that they've been naturalized in 44 out of 47 prefectures. But here's the kicker. Raccoons are not a native species in Japan. In fact, they've only been here since the 1970s because of an anime. The anime that caused all of this heartache and meiwaku is called Arai Guma Raskuru, or Rascal the Raccoon, released in 1977. Rascal the Raccoon is an adaption of the novel Rascal, A Memoir of a Better Era by Sterling North. The novel details North's experiences of having a pet raccoon in early 20th century Wisconsin. The anime was the third in a very popular line of anime adaptions of Western properties in the 70s and 80s called the World Masterpiece Theater Series. This series featured a number of slice-of-life tales of children living in foreign countries and had a huge influence on Japan. Just trust me, if you ask any Japanese woman over like the age of 40 about Canada, they'll tell you about Akage no Anne or Anne of Green Gables. As in the novel, the anime centers around a young boy who fostered a baby raccoon after its mother is callously murdered in cold blood by a hunter. Seriously guys, Rascal the Raccoon has one of the most hardcore openings I've ever seen in a kid's cartoon. Remember in Bambi, the big famous scene, Bambi and his mother are standing in this huge grotto filled with snow and Bambi's mother hears something and it gets all tense and she's like, quick, Bambi, to the thicket. And they run away and you hear the gunshot and Bambi's all alone, he's saying, mother, mother. And then, your mother cannot be with you anymore. Well. Rascal the Raccoon definitely one-ups that. In Rascal the Raccoon, in its first episode, which was, you know, an anime made for children in the 1970s, Rascal's mother gets domed by a hunter on screen, and her lifeless body falls from the tree to the ground, where little baby Rascal runs over all sad and panicked, and cries over the corpse of his dead mother. Ah, oh, God, I love Japan. Well, to be fair, this is the same country that thought that this scene from Barefoot Gen was appropriate to show children in public school. I could only sit through a couple of these painfully slow episodes, but it's basically what you would expect. It's whimsical, slice-of-life cuteness, kind of like a Ghibli film. I mean, think My Neighbor Totoro, just minus the incredible animation, and on a 70s budget, of course, and minus Miyazaki's direction, and take away about 70% of the charm, and about half the cuteness, half the whimsy, and you have Rascal the Raccoon. The boy raises Rascal into a fine little rascal, and they go on their little cutesy stand-by-me adventures in the woods. Of course, little Rascal is always getting up to mischief, and he's always causing trouble for the boy and his neighbors as he's a wild animal. Until one day, the boy realizes that Rascal isn't the greatest house pet. So he brings him out on a little boat ride, and they say their heartfelt sayonara, and everybody cries, and that's the end for their relationship. And Rascal goes on to make wonderful little Rascal babies, and finds that hunter who killed his mother and gets his revenge arc and murders that guy and it's just a happy ending overall. Uh, isn't that just a great message guys? Just, just, I think it's a wonderful message for kids because you know kids, they love to go and see animals outside and they might even pick one up like a wild cat or any kind of like wild shrew or rat and they'll say, hmm, this would be a great pet. But as we know, wild animals do not belong in the home. And yeah, I'm sure that Japan really took that message to heart. Ah, yeah. So anyways, the anime was ridiculously successful and raccoons just became like the biggest fad pet of the late 70s through early 80s in Japan. At the peak of their popularity, Japanese families were importing about 1,500 raccoons every single year to be kawaii little house pets. And they lived happily ever after. 
while the raccoons were still babies. But the Japanese families quickly realized that those cute little raccoon babies with their big eyes and oh, their cute little pussies and oh, he just wants some pizza. Just look at them, aren't they adorable? Later become wily, at times angry and violent little shits who will leave your home like the Tasmanian devil in a china shop. You see, for some reason that betrays all logic, the Japanese thought that they were getting this cute, adorable little goofball-like rascal. And instead, what they got was the scavenging, mean, post-apocalyptic survivor Mad Max of the Animal Kingdom. And hey, make it zombie post-apocalyptic if you want to add rabies into the mix. And in their moment of darkness and desperation, I imagine the Japanese face their moral dilemma like this. Minasama, kite kudasai. This may not be the result that we wanted. These raccoons are destroying our homes, our families. I woke up to one biting my ass, but they didn't ask to be brought here. It was us that brought them here. And therefore, it is our responsibility as the Japanese people to shoulder this burden to make right what we have done. To give these little raccoons the greatest little raccoon lives they could have ever asked for. Come here, little guy. Oh. Onegaishimasu. And so instead of pulling an old yeller and taking them to the back and putting them out of their misery, most Japanese people elected to shrug their shoulders and say, Ah, shogunai. And release these crafty, intelligent trash pandas who are incredibly adept at surviving in urban and rural environments into the wild where they would never be seen or heard from again. Until, you know, they caused massive environmental and property destruction and just became this massive national pain in the ass. The raccoon crisis in Japan became so bad that the Japanese government eventually made them illegal to import and own and by 2004 made great efforts to call the population. And by call the population, I mean they went to every single farmer in Japan and said, here, take this cage, take this samurai sword, grab your sickles, do what you gotta do. Get rid of these friggin' little bastards. And try to get rid of the little bastards they did. But unfortunately for the Japanese people, nature finds a way and raccoons are a problem that is here to stay. As for Rascal, he remains an icon of Japanese childhood nostalgia. He's a merchandise and marketing juggernaut, and I promise you if you walk around Japan, you'll see him on store shelves or in advertisements with the likes of Ampaman or Doraemon. And thus ends one of the dumbest stories I've ever heard in my life, folks. Anyways, I was playing Donkey Kong recently, and I was just like, Oh my god, look at Diddy Kong, isn't he adorable? So through some back channels, I'm actually gonna go buy a little pet baby monkey because like, oh my god, wouldn't they just be like the cutest pet? Like, just be so adorable. I'm sure my neighbors would love him and he would just be like the greatest thing ever. So anyways guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace.